Hey, everybody. <laughs> hey, what a weekend, huh? You know, I've been waiting for like five, six years, six years probably, for, to experience a good lake effect snow, and I'm happy that it's happening. Uh, I'm happy that I'm safe at home in a warm house uh, with lots of uh, comfy clothes and heat that's uh, on and just happy to experience it. Although it is no fun letting the dogs out and then they come back in and uh, the whole living room is full of snow. Uh, how's everybody doing? Staying warm? Okay. Well, I don't know if anyone cares, but uh, my weather app glitched out yesterday. It told me that the, the temperature was negative zero degrees yesterday. You know, and it's funny, uh, but negative zero was the topic of the lecture in Comp Org last week, uh, how to avoid negative zero and why computers abhor negative zero. So, that uh, is ironic. Go. Yeah. Uh, let me get this going here. Hopefully it doesn't log me out. So we're gonna do something fun today. <clears throat> and uh, why am I the only person? Okay, good. Okay, so <clears throat> as we always do, uh, let's start with review, and the review can come in one of three flavors. There's the general review, the book questions, and project questions. I got some book questions. Okay, and uh, Victoria, I, uh, uh, in answer to your message, uh, they are online now, and I apologize for the delay. Okay, Colin. A uh, book. If I can find it. Uh, the nest. The the challenge activity. Five point eight point one. Five point eight point one coming up. Five point eight. And uh, there's, there it is. Is this correct? Yes. Okay, good. Uh, so given uh, the number of rows, the number of columns, print uh, a rectangle <clears throat> using nested loops. Okay. So they've given some code here already. And that looks like it's indented to the um, inner loop. So let's oblige it. So for um, now the number of rows, if that were the outer loop, it would iterate more slowly. That seems to make sense because looking at two and three, it's two rows and that would be the outer loop. So for uh, row in range uh, num rows, okay, does this help you get started? I think so. And then there'd be another one, which uh, is hard to do because um, it's not liking tabs. Okay, so maybe yeah. yeah, I'll figure out how to do it. There we go. Okay, so I got a proper tabbing now. And what do you think I should do next, Colin? I'm trying to put that. I'm trying to think. So nested loop. Because I'm not really good with loops, fours at least. 
Okay, so if it was a four, F-O-R, right? Right. Looking at line four, what do you think I should put in for line five? Drum rows. Oh. All right. In range, num calls. Let's try that. Okay. Hey, do you ever uh, play that game like complete the squares or something where, you know, you, um, you draw lines between rows and columns to surround the box and you score points against somebody else? Oh, this, there's your program to print out uh, boards instead of having to draw dots yourself. Okay. Hmm. Anybody have another question? Can you do the next one? The next one? All right. Um, boy, I have a sense of deja vu. Um, we didn't do this one. It was with the other class, maybe? We did not do this one? Yes? No? Okay. Well, let's go back to the top. And um, there's some key information right here. So to get the ordinal of the letter A, so that return ord returns the internal code for that letter, letter A. Uh, and the CHR turns an internal code, an integer, into the equivalent letter. So um, uh, why don't we get a little practice of that? I'm going to uh, flip over to uh, Replit. And so here, uh, suppose you have the letter A. That's the value, letter A. But what is the value of the ord of A? That turns it into an integer. And that integer is defined by an organization called, um, uh, well, it's an international standard, but the, the standard was named ASCII for American Standard Code for Information Interchange. Uh, back in the days when America ruled. Uh, your audio is cutting out. Nope, still nothing. All right. Okay, uh, that may sound better. Um, oh, we sure can hear you. Yeah. All right, this sound needs to be off. There. Hello? It was echoing. Yeah, and it's better now? Yes. Yeah, okay. Uh, let me uh, close the door. Because now we're using a room mic which has no noise canceling. So puppy noises would come straight through. So as I was saying, uh, that uh, ASCII uh, is the name for the standard that assigns numbers to letters, letters to numbers. And uh, it, you can learn more about ASCII using a search, A-S-C-I-I, and looking at the uh, images, you'll see loads and loads of ASCII tables. So in Replit, let's just look up the, the I haven't seen this one before. Let's try this one. Uh, let's look up the lowercase a, and here it is. 
and A corresponds to decimal 97. So let's go back to Replit and see what we got. Uh, I said ORD of A, and I got 97. Okay. Now, suppose I say CHR of 98. I'm expecting a lowercase b. And there it is. Okay. So using both char, uh, CHR and ORD are going to be necessary for this challenge. Let me uh, clean this up a little bit and go back to Zybooks. Uh, where am I? How did I get here? It's all the way at the bottom. Okay, thank you. I was lost. Okay, so this is going to be a nested loop. And the, uh, uh, the if you look at the output, it's one, 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 two, two, two. And for one A, one B, one C. So the inner loop is the letter. The outer loop is the number. You see how the number is changing more slowly than the letter. And then the challenge, of course, is going to be to figure out how to uh, turn uh, a number into a letter so that you can count. I mean, I, I, I can't make a for loop that goes from A to C. Well, I can, but it's too much trouble. And they want you to obviously to learn about CHR and ORD. So how about we just do the first outer loop and do a test. So for uh, row in num rows, just like before. And I think that was a range of num, ro num rows. And I'm going to start once again. There, thank you. Uh, I'll just, uh, this, this is temporary code just to get a feel for it. So print and uh, row and um, end equals that. Okay, this is not going to work, but I just want to see what the output is. Okay, so I'm off by one. So you notice I'm supposed to start at one, but I started at zero. That's what range does. <clears throat> so let's fix that by saying a uh, row plus one. That should address that. Good. Uh, now let's create the inner loop that does the letters. Okay. So for column in range num calls so column is going to be a number that starts at zero and i want to turn that into a capital a so uh let's do the following let's add a format string And another parenthesis there. And then let's put in places for two uh, outputs. Okay. And now let's work on the second output. But we'll break it out into its constituent parts. So um, the column is equal to col plus so how do i get the the code for the capital letter a can anybody tell me how to get the ordinal for the capital letter ord of a yep okay so that's a number so the code for A plus zero is going to be A. 
and the code for A plus one will be B, but we're still a number. Now I got to turn it back into a letter and that's with <clears throat> CHR. And <clears throat> sorry. Uh, now we can put in uh, C. And let's see, that's in the wrong place, isn't it, folks? The C should go here. Okay, let's try it. Outstanding. Wait, I didn't get it. All right. So uh, we know how this, <clears throat> this statement works. Uh, so let's concentrate on line nine. So COL is going to go from zero, one, two, et cetera. So if I manage to change the letter A into a number and I add call to it and then turn the sum back into a letter, I can march through the alphabet. And that's what I'm doing on line nine is I'm taking the letter A. And oh, I just said I forgot to put range in. Ah, or a line okay. seven. All okay, right. Now it works. Okay, good. I'm not so, sure what's wrong with mine. It's not getting me in. All right. Uh, would you <clears throat> be willing to share your screen? Let me set that up. Yeah. If if you're willing, go ahead. Okay. Uh, num rows, num calls for column range. C equals uh, call is the number plus the ordinal of the letter A. And that goes into C. And uh, uh, scroll down. Let's see what output you got versus what they were expecting. Uh, so your output was 1C and 2C. Okay. Is it supposed to be indented with the little C? Can I? Can you scroll up? Oh, excellent. Excellent. So that the observation that was just made is the correct observation. Try that. Boom. That works. Thanks. Okay, good. Another question. Can we do 5.10.2 in the book? Of course we can. Uh, let's go find it. 5.10.2. Break it and continue. And uh, we're looking for, is this the one? You're not sharing your screen anymore. Oh, how foolish of me. Uh, okay, this, good. So Simon says it's a memory game where Simon outputs a sequence of 10 characters, R, G, B, and Y. Uh, and the user must repeat the sequence. <clears throat> Create a for loop that compares each character of the two strings <clears throat> for each matching character, add one point to the user score, and upon a mismatch, end the loop. Okay, so let's make sure our variables are all, all ready for us. Uh, for And let's see, what do we want to do for compares the two strings. Ah, okay. All right. Uh, now, Simon outputs create a for loop for the matching character. 
what I'm what I'm thinking about is whether or not they'll guarantee to make both strings, both inputs, the same length. Because if they're not the same length, we have to check for that. Uh, otherwise, we'll get an out of range uh, index out of range error. But let's make believe, and we'll find out. But let's make believe they are going to guarantee the two inputs are the same length. Uh, Let's see, what chapter, what is this chapter? Break and continue. Oh, okay. So not nested loops. That makes it easy. That makes it more clear. So uh, for, uh, I wonder if we could use enumerate. So let's see. So for index and letter in enumerate, Simon pattern. Okay. So enumerate <clears throat> is going to give me two return values. The first one being the position in the in the uh, container. In this case, a container is a string. Uh, and then the second return is the value at that position. So that's going to give me a lot of what I need uh, to do the, the comparison. So if the Simon, well, I already have the letter. If the letter is equal to the user pattern index, uh, then it'll be uh, score, user score plus, uh, plus equals one. That's wrong. There it is, score plus equals one. Else, they want you to end the loop. So what keyword would end the loop? Break. Yes, that's right. Let's try this. Test aborted. Uh, STR is not a callable. Uh, oh. Does anybody uh, see my problem? You need it's on line six. Square brackets instead of parentheses? Yes, that's right. Thank you. Okay. Look at that. Okay, so that was with enumerate, which is pretty handy. Uh, why don't we write it a different way using uh, range? So how about uh, for index in range of the length of Simon pattern? One more parenthesis and colon. And that would be... The only change necessary would be to actually call to literally call out the uh, letter from Simon pattern. See? And also correct. Okay, other questions, please. Okay, remember on Thursday, it's review day, and then a week from today is midterm. I'm not assigning a new project because we have the midterm in our, our future. <clears throat> All right, I would uh, like to show you uh, what we're going to do today. I'm so pleased to be able to do this. Uh, we're going to write that flashcard program. Uh, it uh, uh, last time uh, we have a number. We found out we have a number of students in class who are studies studying Japanese, Chinese, etc. And it would be useful for them to be able to do a, a flashcard program, where uh, you know you'd show the, uh, the let's just call it uh, column A and column B, uh, because that's what it'll be in the in the for, uh, in the raw data file. Uh, so there's, <clears throat> let's say, 
uh, column A might be all of the words in the uh, uh, the words that you don't know, and then uh, column B might be the explanations or the definitions of in a language you do know. And notice we could do this not only for Japanese, Chinese, et cetera, Spanish, whatever. Uh, we can also do it for biology, chemistry, anatomy, uh, all these other kinds of things that require a lot of memorization. Uh, here's the ultimate goal that I have for us today. Let me demonstrate. Okay, so uh, you won't be able to use the run button. You'll have to use the, uh, the, the shell. So here I am in a shell and I'm gonna run Python, which on, on Replit is just Python. On my Mac, I have to say Python 3. So don't worry about that, please. Then you give the name of the program. Now, this is something curious because we've never seen this before. I'm going to tell it what data file to use. And in the past, when we've read a file, we hard-coded the name of the file. And now, I'm going to show you how to not hard-code the name of the file so that you can change up uh, the file that you're working with without having to touch the source code of your program. So you might have Japanese and another file called anatomy. Okay, so I'll show you, that'll be one of the thing, lessons we learned today. Let's run this. Ooh, I'm making use of that old school uh, clear the screen thing. And so again, once again, this is the ultimate destination that we're trying to go get to. So select a mode. Uh, one will be A to B only, and two will be B to A only, and three is a mixture. It'll pick at random which direction you want to go. Okay, so I'm going to try uh, three. Uh, and um, that's a coincidence. So at, press enter to see the answer. Okay, so that was from B to A. Let's see what we get next. Uh, this is also going to be B to A. And let's see the A to B. Okay, also B to A. Keep going. Ah, so there's an A, and it's going to go to B. Okay. And at any of these prompts, I can say quit. And it says, would you like to go through the deck again? That will also be printed if you've gone through the whole flashcard deck. So you could do it again. And I'm going to say no. Okay, so that's where we're heading. That's our aspirational goal. Uh, let's take it in pieces. I'm gonna go, first you need the file, don't you? Don't you? So uh, let me share that to you. Uh, go to the browser and collect the link. Japanese, get a link, and I'm putting it in the chat. And that would be to everyone. Okay, by now you know how to click on this link. It'll download uh, Japanese.csv to your computer, and then you have to upload it. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Here, I'm doing the download. Good, I got the download. Now let's go to Replit and do an upload of a file. And uh, where, it, okay, there's my file, choose to upload. And now I've got Japanese.csv. So this is what our data file looks like. And uh, I've got 43 uh, entries, which at some point in our testing, 
I'll want to uh, cut down to let's say just uh, three or four just to make sure that we test the code that will start the flashcard deck over again. But this is good for now. So I'm going to create a new file, uh, call it uh, flashcards.py. And the first thing that I want to teach you is how to get a, a, a file name from the command line. So notice I'm in the shell. And we're going to be running the program like this flashcards.py, and we'll give it the name of a file. And that's how we're going to run the program. So I'd like to first show you how do you get that. OK. So import this.argv. All right, now let's just do a simple test. Uh, print the length of argv and also argv. Uh, let's see, is this thing? Uh, let me try this. From sys import argv. All right, you happy with that now? Yeah, okay. Okay, so uh, argv coming from the package sys gives you access to the command line used to launch the program. And what you'll see is that argv returns to you a list. The list always has at least one member and that's the name of the program itself okay. then after that would be uh first second third so you see what's going on everybody uh argv is a list that has the first item in the list has the name of the program, and then each item in the list thereafter has an argument that was coming from the command line. All right. Okay, that was just testing. Now you know how to get the arguments from the command line. Uh, so how do we write our programs now? If dunder name dunder, is uh, under main, then let's uh, call uh, flashcards. Okay. So flashcards is going to be the main body of our program. You have to define it. Okay. All right. So I would like you to write a function with data that um, returns uh okay so this function is going to uh check for argv sub one being valid and let's just get that far that is really annoying okay so what i'm asking you to do right now is can you write the code that will check to make sure that the argv list contains at least one command line argument? Okay. Hmm. 
is not valid. Uh, print an error and exit with code one. Remember that exit can take an integer and zero says success and anything other than zero says failure. Okay, so that's all I, I want you to do right now. Do something like if something goes here, like that. So what do you need to replace this with? Can I have some ideas from the floor? Can somebody just say something? Are we going to do the accept? Uh, we accept will. There's an error. Uh, this is, is an error. Right? This is an error. This is an error we can catch without an exception. Okay. Ah. So remember how argv works. The length of argv is always going to be at least one. If it's one and and index zero, the first member of argv is always the name of the program. So if there is a valid argv one, the length of argv has to be at least two. So did anybody have that? Get that idea? So if length is less than two of the list? Yes, that's right. Okay, let's try that. You write a little, you test a little. So here's the case where the error should be uh, found and reported. And um, it would help if I called it. Yeah, that would help. Okay. Okay, good, good. Anybody have any questions? Okay, let's uh, add the code to open the file. And first, let's just do it with an uh, without exceptions, and then we'll add the exception. Okay, so with open, and how would I get the uh, uh, value of argv sub one? Rv one as in file. And um, all we want to do is then close it again. So uh, print file opened. And that's that. It'll close. All right, so we wrote a little. Let's test a little. OK, that error code still works. And now let's give it the name of 
a file that we have, Japanese.csv. Okay, our program's working so far. And if we give it a bad file name, we get our crash with file not found there. Okay, so maybe now is a good time to put in the try. Try, indent some more. And then what goes here, Milo? Ah, uh, the accept. Good. So accept and give it the kind of exception you want to catch. So file uh, not found error. Colon, uh, and then we'll give a fancy little error message. All right, and uh, once again, we'll exit with a, a, a negative outcome. So I guess down here we should say exit with a good outcome. Okay, so we've done this one, line seven, we've just done that. Uh, what do I need to import to get uh, CSV support? Anybody? Okay, I got to import a package in order to get CSV. What's it called? CSV. White horse question. Yes, that's right. Import CSV. So how do we uh, wrap a an open file in the CSV reader package, reader thing? So we assign a variable csv.reader and wrapping in file. So now I'd like to create a list of uh, either tuples or lists. So our, our data will be an empty list. Now here's an interesting one I have not shown you before. So if the data, we've, what we've done before is we built, we had this in here, what we did before. And um, when we were done reading in the data, we did a return of data. Right, and that's how we got it from get data all the way back to flashcards. Okay, that's how we did it before, and you know what? We'll we'll keep doing it this way. This is a little less efficient than other ways of doing it. So for a row in R, that's the reader. And what should I do? ROW is a list of, uh, well, I should, I'll say this, should be a list with two members.
Now, up here, a list of either lists or tuples. Let's make it tuples. Uh, yeah, let's make it tuples. Anybody have an idea of how to do that right here? Our data should be a list of two tuples. So R uh, row uh, now has a list. And I want to turn that list into a tuple. But you know what? We'll make it a list of lists. And that way we don't have to turn it into a tuple. OK, so I have row, which is exactly what I want in our data. How do I get it into the data list? I want to add it to the end of the list. Anybody? So what we're looking for is a way of appending to a list. Please don't uh, don't leave me hanging. Is it dot append? Yep, I am just uh, just full of those white horse questions. All right, so uh, data dot append. Now data is a list, and row is a list, and the list in row is uh, should be two members long where column zero is the foreign language or is one language and column one is the other language. So I could just go do that. Oh no, pardon me. Sorry yeah. I'm not being as interactive as I would be. I'm having problems with, I don't know, line five. I get, keep getting unexpected EOF while parsing. All right, would you be um, willing to show your screen? Yeah, sure, I can do that. I don't know why it's happening. So, oh, that's chat. Oh no, here it is. Share. Oh no. What do I want? Second data. But it doesn't even matter if I do something like that, and now anything that I've written is on line eight. If I still run it, there's. Still saying line five? Ah, well, yes. how, did, how did you run it? Huh? How did you run the program? Python main.py. OK, now. Oh, wait look. a second. Wait a second. Wait, that's. Ah, well, that's something that's not what I kept getting. So that's right. It. You you were running the wrong file. I was running the wrong file. Yep. All right. Thank you. Let's see where I can go from here. Happens to everybody. So way down here, I just want to test this code. I'll just print data and see what we get. I can't see. All right, I'll have to type it in again. Python and flashcards, uh, py and Japanese. And uh, that's a problem. And once again, I can't see because of Zoom's lousy interface. Lousy. Python, you have square bracket. Yep. Python. 
which I couldn't see because of Zoom covering it up with the either the captions or the, the, the status bar or whatever. Okay, so data is correctly filled in. Okay, but I want us to write good quality programs. So how about I'm going to add uh, a bad line. Maybe it's blank. Or maybe it is malformed. It has just one column. Okay, so you see line nine is bad. Now my program doesn't know that and it allowed bad data to go to be read in. So we don't want that. We want to write really robust, good, good code. So let's go back to flashcards. Can you suggest where I could check and then how I could skip lines that don't have exactly two members? Why don't you do it in the for loop? Okay, can you give me a line number? Uh, well, the one in 12 after or before the data append. Okay, so my 21. Um, oh yeah, sorry. Yeah, uh, yeah, good yeah. idea. So that's exactly right. And what can we say? Like if, what? about like the length of the row is not two. So with a loop and you want to skip, which keyword is that? Continue. That's right. Okay. So let's try that. And now uh, the... Where is where was it? Okay, so somewhere up here was the bad string, <laughs> but the string should not be visible anymore. I can't find. Oh yeah, there it is. So uh, right after yes, and good. So we've screened it out. Awesome. So we've actually got, uh, that finishes get data, I think. And we've got lots of good error checking in there too. Okay, now I've got a thing. With the um, data, it, under def flashcards, it says data equals get data, rada rada. Lovely, lovely. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait. Oh, wait, never mind. Never mind, I figured it out. I like the sound of that. All right. So I suppose the very next thing to do would be to uh, print a menu and get the mode. So the mode will tell us, do we only want to go from A to B? or B to A, or both. So def print menu and pass. Once again, I'll demonstrate what I'd like to produce. So um, there's the menu. So select the mode. Know the numbers. What happens if I put in a word? Ah, ultimately, I want you to screen out for testing of the numbers. So 555 is not a valid number. See how it's just repeating?
Well, looks like I could have handled four better, but at least it did quit. Okay, so ideas for printing uh, the menu and getting the mode. Wouldn't we have to print that whole um, select mode screen and then prompt the user for one of their numbers? Good, good. And we're doing that with a clear screen. And you know what? If we go back and look at how the program works, it looks like uh, it's going to clear the screen after each full, you know, flash and then explanation. So since we're going to need to clear the screen in more than one place, uh, let's make a function out of it. So how about a function? You have to switch screens. Thank you. And I'll just fill this in, uh, but I, I think you remember it by now. So it would be uh, octal 33 <coughs> uh, bracket uh, 1 semicolon 1 H, then octal 33 bracket, and what is it? Just plain J, right? There's no number there. And uh, what else do we got? We got print of uh, three, both. Uh, print four is quit. All right, now I have to uh, get input. So that would be what? Mode equals uh, input. And how did I do it in the other? Okay. And the prompt was and then return mode. Are we up for trying it out? Uh, let me get rid of this print data because we know that works now. Let's try it. Okay, so it did. Um, uh, but I seem to be on the second line instead of the first. So that's the first problem. Uh, then I can try five. And uh, it didn't object. It didn't repeat. So that seems to me that this needs to be in a loop, right? Would we use a while loop? OK. And while, and actually, let's put the clear screen in there. So while what? We don't know how long, how many times we're going to need to loop. So I'm thinking, what if we loop forever and then use a break statement to get out of the loop when we have what we want? Does that sound good? OK, so while true, that's forever. And there's that. OK. 
Okay. Now, now I want a, a loop again or a break if the input is good. So how can we check to see if the input is good? So if mode in, and these are going to be letters, right? Because we didn't change it into an integer. So one or two or three or four. If the mode is in these, then, well, heck, I'm happy. Let's just do the return. So let's try that. Uh, okay, it looped, it looped, it looped, and try three. Huh. The loop stopped. I'm having a problem with mine. Um, I would love to see it if you could, sh willing to show it to me. One sec. So, I don't know what happened up here, but like every time I like clears it right away without like printing all this select mode and everything. Okay. Uh, the um, could you reload your your web page because it seems to be a little screwed up. Yeah, I don't know what's wrong with it. <laughs> As, okay, good. All right. So, okay, now it's working. Must have just been glitching. Okay, but uh, but we are getting the the green lines, and uh, uh, so I. Don't know. I I bet that says data hasn't been used, so that's not a problem. Mode hasn't been used. Uh, and then you've got the exit. Uh, so the program, so as soon as you type something in, go ahead, uh, type something in to your program. Some Okay, and then it exits. Okay, good. Uh, try typing in something bad. We haven't tested that. So run it again. Yep. Um, it like jumps my cursor up past this. Okay. I'll tell you what. Let's take a no. look at clear screen. So scroll up. Uh, one one H and oh, uh, there's you're missing something, and you have a little bit of a mistake. So at the end of your string, you have a, a left parenthesis and a right uh, bracket. So it should be uh, delete those two characters. And it should be a left bracket and a capital J. Okay, left bracket though. That's a right bracket. No, that's a brace. <laughs> Good, you got it now. Okay, try it again. Okay. I don't, I still don't know like why that was. Okay. Okay. Okay, now hit uh, a good number. Good. All right. So you could stop sharing. Good. All right, let's tighten up a little bit there. And uh, I'd like to show you a feature of Replit. 
Uh, watch my mouse cursor. And when I get over this middle column here, there's, uh, you see the square and the minus sign inside? If you press that, that folds the whole function. And I'm gonna use that because uh, I've debugged get data and I don't really need to see it on screen. So if I want it back, I could just dial it down. So print menu is now working. We could get that, make that go away. Okay, now I have a problem and potentially more than one. All right. Uh, show your screen. Yes, sir. Nine twenty two invalid syntax. Right now I'm just looking through different uh, uh well I see a missing call. Uh no I don't. Explanation via high school. Uh middle school. Is there any particular topic that we want to focus on with discrimination? Or is it just like okay if you could mute? Again? Sorry, uh mute. So line twenty-two. Uh Invalid syntax. So with open argv1 as in file, right? Uh, or file not found error. Um, So try this in the shell, because you're supposed to be using the shell over on the right. I think he's indented too much. Uh, yes, you're right, he's indented too much. Should be equal to try. Yeah, correct. It should be lining up with the try. Now, if you scroll up, though, I'm still a little worried here. Scroll up. Uh, yep, so you're indented incorrectly. Oh, on line five, you've got an actual error, right? So data equal is an empty list. So go to the uh, last character of that line and make data into an empty list. Do I just delete it? No, we need it. Uh, so data equals, and then an empty list. This is no. Okay, so how would you make an empty list? Probably add another return after that. Okay, somebody from the class want to help? Uh, you put brackets in with nothing inside of them. Good. All right. And now you've got another problem. Uh, beginning on line 11 and going through line 25, that's supposed to be inside this function, but you've indented in properly so that it's now outside the function. So um, all of those lines need to be indented by one level from 11 to 25. Is there any way I can indent an entire section or do I have to do it individually? Uh, we'll try this. Uh, use shift and then the down arrow. More. Stop. And do you use spaces or tabs? 
I use spaces, but I feel like that would just delete the whole thing. Uh, well, uh, tabs, uh, hit a tab. So tabs work, but now you'll get uh, incompatible indentation. So what I would invite you to do is to use, um, oh, actually worked. Uh, but you'll need to use the shell to run, to, to run the program. So click on shell and say Python and main.py space main.py space right, so japanese.csv. Uh, hit tab right now. Go ahead and hit tab. Okay. All right, run the program. Okay, don't use the run button. <laughs> Go back to the shell and hit return. Enter. Okay, so we got something else. Uh, Line 21. In line 21, it didn't like, it didn't look like you had anything that you were appending to the data set. Correct, correct. So what should Colin append? Uh, the row. Good. Colin, could you add that? Say that one more time. In line 21, you have data.append, but you didn't give it anything to append. So in the parentheses, you need to add row from your loop up above. Good. Nope. Good. So this thing is actually me because it never tells me when it's actually on. So whenever I type anything, it'll just go out. Use control Z. <laughs> That's commands. Uh, are you on a Mac? Then it'll be Command Z. All right. There you go. Oh, okay. Now go to Shell and use the up arrow. Click, click in the black area. And up arrow, Enter. Okay, getting better and better. We'll try uh, the number 99. Good. So try the number uh, four. Perfect. Okay. Is this where we're at or do I still have to do more things? Nope. This is where we're at. All right, fine. Okay. Uh, thanks for that. You're welcome. So uh, DATA data has that list that on Colin's screen he just printed. And that list is going to be in the same order as the lines in the file. Wouldn't it be nice if we gave a random order each time? So does anybody remember how to randomize a list? Sort of shuffle it up? Was it choice? Choice will select one at random. And I suppose you could do that. You, I suppose you could, but if you did it using choice, it would mean that you wouldn't be guaranteed that every single line from the file is tested, is run, is, is, is used. Because choice might, oh, who knows? It might select the same line five times in a row. So instead, what I'm proposing is shuffling the data so that you get the randomization in the ordering 
but and you're also guaranteed to go through every single item in data. So what I'm looking for is shuffle. And how do you make use of shuffle? Do you have to import it from random? Yes, you do. So from random import shuffle. Okay. So I want this loop to go on forever. And each, each of this outer loop executions will be one full uh, pass through the whole file. So it's here that I'll shuffle. So shuffle data. And then for an item in data, uh, I'll just print it out. Okay. Now this loop will end when I've gone through all of them. So here I'll put in, um, Go through the deck again, and we'll say your choices are yes or no. And if the response equals yes, uh, uh, not equals yes, then break. Oops. And so what am I proposing we do here? Uh, we shuffle th this line 48 loop is each time through that loop, we're going to go through one full pass of the deck. And if we get all the way through the deck, that's line 52, we'll say, do you want to run the deck again? And if the answer isn't yes, then we break. Let's try that. Okay, so what we see here, this output is line 51. It went all the way through the deck. And I'm going to say, do you want to run again? I'm going to say no. Program exits. Or say one and run again. Yes. And it did it again. And notice it's in a different order, everybody. See, different order each time. Different order each time, thanks to line 49. Okay, I'll leave this on screen. Anybody have questions? For if response is different than Y, couldn't you just do if response is equal to no? Or is there a reason you did not equal to Y? Uh, I did it that way so that any other response will exit the program. Okay. So the only way to do it again is the letter Y. Any other response will be taken as a no. Okay. I have a question on the print menu function up above. So we did the while loop. And did we not include um, a break in that one because of um, the section where it said if the mode is one, two, three, or four, and then return mode, did that? Yep. Okay. Yeah, that got us out of the loop. Okay, thank you. Good, good question. Okay. Now, I am going to leave you here with write the code that prints one of uh, 
C-O-L-U-M-N, column uh, A or B, depending uh, upon mode. Then wait for the user. Then print the other of the A or B. Then wait for the user. Okay. So you know what? I'm looking at the function flashcards here, and I'm thinking, you know, that's uh, that's already getting to be a pretty long function. Uh, so maybe we'll do, maybe we'll, you know, for simplicity, we could do that, all this code right where you see it, uh, where the comments are, line 51 to 54. Uh, or you could write a function that would Make, that would allow you to keep flashcards to be relatively simple looking. So which would you like to do? Somebody in the class make the choice for the class. Make it a function. Make it a function. Okay. So how about def uh, ask question. And I'll need two parameters. So parameter number one would be the mode, because I need to figure out how to ask the question. And then the other parameter would be the item. So I'm gonna move this, all of this code, out of here and put it here. Okay, so does anybody uh, have thoughts on how to do ask question? So look at what the comment says. Could you do an if statement? So like if mode equals one and then kind of go from there and do an if statement for each uh, mode? Uh, yes, yes, we could do that. Let's do that. So if mode equals, and there's still letters, right? So letter one, uh, then LF mode equals two, pass. LF mode equals three, and pass else print how did I get here bad mode all right so that's a good one so that reminds me in print menu we haven't handled exiting if you enter four So how about here, if mode is the letter four, uh, exit with a return value of zero, okay? Okay, so you guys go ahead and uh, just do mode equals one. So implement that. That means we, mode one says you're gonna uh, print the Japanese and then, or, or the language, and then wait for the user, and then print the English words. Hey, I've got a real quick question about Replit. Mm -hmm. When I, it seems like when I do things, like make parentheses or what have you, or if I write, type user, um, it wants to have a box pop up and try and, uh, I don't know, do things that I don't want it to do, like exchange user for 
user warning or whatever. I'm so if you type in I US, make it? Yes. nothing's happening for me. Yeah, it's hmm. I kind of get the same things. Yeah, okay, I'll stop showing and maybe you show. Okay. Oh. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah. Sorry, things are going on. People are here. Oh, uh, when does class end for you? Do they have masks on? They do. Yes, eleven thirty. It ends eleven thirty. Okay. On the okay. I'll share the screen now. Is that security? I don't know. Stop talking. Sorry. Anno, we can see my screen? Uh, yes. All right, look, U-S-E-R. Oh, hey, look, user warning. And now if I try to like- Just hit a space. To, go to the next one. User. user. Okay, so U-S-E-R. U-S-E-R. And then uh, I'm gonna go to the next one. Boop, stop that. Okay, right. How so about not do that? Backspace. Yeah. To uh, erase the pound sign. Right. Okay. USER hit space. USER space. Mm hmm. USER. And then. Did you hit a tab or? USER space. And if I hit enter, even though I did do space. Just type oh. the equal sign. USER space equals. I just don't want it to keep popping up and doing things that I don't want it to do. Well, I think maybe now or, it'll work a little bit better. Or check uh, print. I'm gonna put this here. Oh hi! Look at this big old box of text that's all over the entire thing. Yeah, I know. How do I make it not do that? Oh uh, well, I believe there is a setting. Let me let me take a look for you. Thank you. Uh, I'll stop sharing my screen. I'm looking for the settings still. I'm still looking for the settings. I think I found it. It's code intelligence, I think. Yeah, that's that sounds about right. And where is that setting? If you go like where it says on the far left, it says files, packages, um, debugger, and then there's a setting. Oh, the gear. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, let me show my screen. And here's the gear. And uh, so I had mine disabled because uh, I found it absolutely as objectionable as Milo has. So I've disabled yeah. it. Excellent, thank you. Maybe this is yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. So uh, I'm in the wrong file now. So flashcards, yeah. So how about we uh, clear the screen? And then uh, we're going A to B, right? So print, uh, and that would be item zero. And then um, or quit. Okay, so I need doubles there. Um.
Okay. We can just exit. Okay. Now I'm going to do this very quickly and simply because we're running out of time and then I'll ask you to do the rest. And look at all of the um, duplication here. We're going to have to get rid of all this duplication. I do not want all this duplication, but let's let's try running the program. Python flashcards Japanese. Okay, mode one. Go through the deck again. Uh, no. I'll bet I know what the problem is. I bet I forgot to call ask question. So let's see. Ah, then I did. Ask question. And the two arguments are the mode and the item. So mode and item. Okay. Hey, this seems to be uh, working. I mean, I haven't tested it exha uh, exhaustively. Okay. And even quit works. So I'm gonna leave this on screen. And not only is there a duplication of code here, which I'd love to get rid of, like the response and the response. Um, whenever you have duplication of code that suggests a function could replace that code. Uh, but also, once you add mode two and mode three, you'll see a huge amount of duplication of code. So there's got to be a better way of doing this. And that's what I'm going to leave you with until next time. I want you to work, just finish this as it is so you can appreciate how much duplication there is. And then think about how do we eliminate the duplication. Fair enough? Oh, uh, and I have a favor to ask. Uh, does anybody think that this will be useful? You know, for, for languages, like anybody doing anatomy? You know, you got the, the shin bone uh, with the, uh, the elbow and... Okay, well, what I was wondering is, could you in the class make up some data files? And we'll collect them and put them online. So, for instance, um, um, you could do one for physics. Uh, you could say F equals MA. And it would be the formula for uh, figuring out uh, force, mass times acceleration. Okay. Uh, what about math? Uh, Maybe somebody taking some, tell me what you're going to do. Somebody tell me a file that they'll create. Anybody? Uh, I'm an economics major. And so we use a lot of uh, like formulas for like unemployment rate, for example. So I could make a data set for those definitions. Good, good. Uh, and if your formulas are, uh, complex, you know, like with square roots and things, then you'll have to come up with a creative way of representing that. Uh, so, for instance, you could say uh, um, uh, rate equals um, sum and square root because we don't have the fancy characters to do the math symbols. Okay? Good. Thank you. All right, so I'm going to leave us here. Are there any questions before we go? Is this, so what is the assignment pretty much? The assignment coming out of class? Yeah, um, what you just told us to do. Right, so you need this. 
uh, a version of this code here for mode two to replace the pass and mode three to replace the pass. So, uh, so complete that. And then I'd like you to observe how much code duplication there is. And can you think of ways to eliminate the code duplication? And we'll do that starting next class. No, we won't. We have review next class, then an exam. So a week and a half from now, we'll finish this program. All right. Okay. Any questions? All right, everybody stay safe, stay, stay warm. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye.